who in the hell am I? This past weekend has been some of the rowdiest crowds I, I've been a part of here at Mon. Hello and welcome to Sports Overtime number two in 2023. I'm Ian Cress. When Jalen Llewellyn went down with a torn ACL last month and was ruled out for the season, the Michigan men's basketball team called upon freshman Doug McDaniel to enter the starting lineup. The Wolverines entered the day having lost their last two Big Ten games and were hoping to keep pace with Purdue, who sits atop the conference. Michigan welcomed Northwestern to town for a Sunday matinee. Both teams came in with two losses in conference play. And last game for Michigan, saw Jet Howard score 34 in the loss to Iowa, the most by any Wolverine since 2006. And out of the gate, the freshman continued his hot shooting. This triple sparked an 8-0 run for Michigan and was a part of a 16-point night for Howard. The Wolverines led by as much as 12 in the first half, but the Wildcats crawled all the way back. Robbie Barman gives Northwestern its first lead of the game with this tray ball just before halftime. The Wildcats took a two-point lead into the break. Michigan, though, wasn't worried. Howard draws the double team and finds fellow freshman McDaniel who had a career high 17 points and down the stretch Kobe Bufkin would knock down clutch shots to end the two game losing streak for Michigan. Bufkin had a team high 20 points and helps the Wolverines take down Northwestern 85 to 78. So it seems the transition to becoming a starter has been a smooth one for McDaniel. The acclimation has been easy because I have a great team. You know, they welcome me with open arms. And, you know, the role was very easy to go into. You know, I still got Jalen in my corner teaching me, you know, keep giving me tips and stuff like that. But, you know, I have a great team. They encourage me every day and let me know, you know, I'm fine and I'm perfect for the role. Well, I had mentioned Purdue was leading the Big Ten with one loss in conference play. Well, tomorrow at 2.30 in the afternoon at the Breslin Center, Michigan State will be looking to hand the third-ranked Boilermakers another loss. And in order to make that happen, the Spartans will have to contain Purdue's big man, Zach Eady, which will be a tall task, no pun intended. The 7'4 junior leads the Boilermakers with 21 points in 13 rebounds per game. In last year's meeting at Breslin, Eady scored 25 points, but it wasn't enough to overcome Tyson Walker's game-winning shot in the final seconds. MSU's big men will be tested tomorrow afternoon, and one player who will try to slow down Edie is 6'11 freshman Carson Cooper, who played a career-high 13 minutes on Friday against Illinois and finished with a career-high six points. I, I thought he played very well. Um, he's been a bright spot that he's played better than we thought. Um, but he's limited in some things too. It just depends how they're playing. And, uh, and yet, uh, that was a positive for us. So this will also be MSU's fourth game in 10 days, who had their seven-game winning streak come to an end on Friday at Illinois. Both, both MSU and Purdue, playing Monday, have less than three days to prepare for the game tomorrow, which wasn't always the case for Izzo. This is odd. It's not been this way most of my career in the Big Ten, and um, I don't like it for anybody. I think Brad said to me, he's on a binge now. That's going to be a lot of games in a short period of time, and I don't know why that's healthy for anybody, but uh, I got my theory and why I, I changed some things, but who in the hell am I? Well, you are a Hall of Famer. As for the MSU women's basketball team, riding a three-game losing streak after falling to Michigan yesterday, they also welcome in a top 15 opponent this week. Number 12, Iowa, with the nation's third leading scorer, Caitlin Clark, will tip off with the Spartans on Wednesday. Michigan knows all about the challenges Iowa presents. Last Saturday, the Hawkeyes defeated the Wolverines in Ann Arbor behind 28 points from Clark. Michigan sits at fifth in the Big Ten with its win over MSU and have now won five of the last six meetings with its in-state rival. The Wolverines didn't always have success in this series. Before 2020, Michigan had just five wins in Susie Merchant's first 12 years at MSU. So what's changed for the Wolverines? 
you know, Michigan State has always been the program in the state, but why not Michigan? I mean, it's great. The University of Michigan is great at everything. Why not women's basketball? Why not us? So I think, you know, we have to give credit to those that came before and said, hey, we believe that we could be the first to do this. And now you look up and there's three darn banners hanging up there like, holy cow, like, that's incredible. Another program who has turned a corner is Michigan State Hockey. In front of its fifth straight sellout crowd at Munn Ice Arena last night, the Spartans swept number five Penn State with a win in shootouts. Last night's crowd also got to see senior Jagger Joshua score not one, not two, but three goals for his second hat trick of this season. Joshua now has 11 goals this year after having eight goals in the previous three seasons combined. He's one of two Division I hockey players with multiple hat tricks. Joshua has never been a part of a winning team here at MSU, so he's certainly enjoying all this support this season. And this is obviously some, somewhat of a new feeling for most of the guys in the locker room here. We haven't had a chance to have a success like this. Uh, yeah, I, at the end of the day, I mean, all you want to do when you, you come here, you want to win and, and put on a good show for the crowd. And, I mean, this past weekend has been some of the rowdiest crowds I, I've been a part of here at Mon, and, and I'm forever thankful for that. And, and their support means a lot, and we're hoping to continue these last three games here at home, and hopefully they'll be rowdy again for us. So the Spartans have a bye this weekend, and it comes at a good time with their next opponent being number two, Minnesota, during the final week in January. It's time for us to take our first and only break. 